Welcome back to the channel. This is an updated guide to install the Pi Network node on a Windows 10 PC. I'm also including the port forwarding steps for those who had issues. So let's get to it. So we're going to begin at our Windows 10 desktop and I'm going to open up my browser here. And as you can see, and I'm already at the Pi Network homepage and mindpi.com is the official website. And to download the Pi node, you can see the link up here at the top. We're going to click on that and we'll be able to download the application right off the site. So we'll click on download and I'm gonna be doing the Windows version. So let's click on download and it's about 118 megs in size. I'll start the setup right now. So the setup's complete and it just created a shortcut on the desktop over here and now it's launching the app. So it's asking me to log in and I'll click on log in and what we have to do is sign in through the mobile app. Okay, so it's logged in in my desktop over here and then I have the note on this side and it's gonna ask me for, to enter this code. So I'm just going to the menu here and I'm gonna select node and it's gonna to wanna to use a sign-in code. So that's the sign-in code over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. Code has been submitted and now it's logged in. Now we're in the node and we wanna activate the node and I'll walk you through those steps right now. First option is to click on continue. And it's gonna let us know that we need to install the Docker and we're also gonna to have to open up some ports on our router. So let's go ahead and first do the first step and that is to install the Docker. So I'm gonna cl click on this link over here to download the Docker and I'll be using Chrome and I'll download it. So the Docker is 520 megs in size, just to keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna say yes. And we have the components installed and shortcuts created. So I'll click on okay. Okay, so it looks like Docker has now completely installed. I can close and restart it. And it's going to restart, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so we have it rebooted. I'm just loading up the node again. Okay, so here we are at the main screen. We can click on continue. Just scroll down here. So it looks like the Docker is installed. It looks like we're going to have to update some software components. So let me just open it up. And uh, so here's the user agreement. So I'm just going to quickly go through this and accept the terms and then click on accept. And here's the update that we're going to have to install right now. So I'm going to click on the link. It's opening up my browser here. There's a package. So there is the link to download the package and it's going to download it and now I can run it. So we'll click on open file and just click on next. Say yes to the prompt and let it complete here. We'll click on finish. And if I scroll down a bit here, I have to set my default version. So I need to run PowerShell. So I'm just going to go into my start menu. Look for PowerShell. I'm going to run this as administrator. I'll say yes to the prompt. And then I can just uh, move this over and copy the line and then I can paste it inside PowerShell, hit enter. And there we go. So you can see that operation has been completed successfully. We're not going to be doing anything else. Looks like that's pretty much the only last step that we needed to do here. Uh, so what I can do is I can just close out of this browser and close PowerShell. And I'm going to quickly shut everything down and just reload it and see if we can get a nice fresh start. It's just loading up right now. So we just got to run this in command prompt or terminal. So I'm going to copy this and I'll go to my start menu and I'm going to open up my command prompt and I'll paste in the line, hit enter. Looks like it's going to download some components there. Okay. It needs access for my, through my firewall. So I'll allow access and it looks like it's good. So let's go back now. Okay, looks like it's running right now. And let's go over here. So it looks like we have that done. We have the daemon running and now we have to open up some ports and I'm going to do that next. So the port is not open. I knew that was going to happen because I'd have zero of these ports open up on my router. Now there's an excellent website that's right over here. I'll make sure I link this in the description below. And uh, what it does is it tests which ports are open and which ones are closed according to the ones that we need for this project. All you have to do is click on the scan button right over here. And what we want to do is we want to open up the ports I'm switching over to my router and I'm going to enable the ports. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start over scan again, and it should give me three of open. So there we go. So the three ports over here are open, but this is an excellent tool that's used just to see if your ports are open. And as you can see, I only have three. It's usually one to three that are open and being used right now. The rest are dummy ports that could be used later on. Uh, so don't be worried if you only have a couple ports open. Port forwarding will vary from user to user. So I'll walk you through some generic steps. I'm going to go to my start menu. I'm just going to type in CMD and open up my command prompt. And inside here, I'm going to be typing in ipconfig and then hit enter. Now you're going to get a bunch of information over here. I'm on a wide network. So I need to find my ethernet adapter. 
Now you're going to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a bunch of adapters, but you want to identify the adapter that you're actually connecting with. And for me, it's my Ethernet adapter and my IP address is right over here. It's 192.168.1.113. So that is the IP of my computer. This IP address might change. And what you would want to do is if you're going to be using one computer for a node, you might want to give it a static IP and I can cover that in another step. But right now, this is just to show you how to do port forwarding. The gateway is the second IP address right here that's also critical. We we need to connect to our router or gateway and configure port forwarding. So what we'll be doing is we'll be using this IP address next. And we want to keep note of these two IPs, one of the computer that we'll be using as a node and the other one as a gateway. So this is the IP address that we have. And we just have to open up our browser. So let me just minimize this and go in here. I'll open up a new tab and just type in the IP address 192.168.1.1 and I'll hit enter and you'll typically get a login page. Now, I have a unified gateway, so I'm going to go ahead and enter in my username and password. Now for the make and model of yours, you're going to want to enter in your username and password that matches it. And then we're going to go on to the next step. So now that I'm logged into my unified gateway for me in my settings, it was located under firewall and security. And then I have a section in here called port forwarding. Now for me, all I have to do is click on the port forwarding option. And it brings me to this window where I'm going to enter in the required details. Some of the common devices used are TP-Link, D-Link and Asus. So for TP-Link under DHCP, you'll have a section called forwarding. And if you select that, you'll be able to enter in the same information right over here. For D-Link, if you have a setup that looks similar to this, you click on advance, and then you should see port forwarding over here on the left-hand side. And for Asus, if you go over to the left-hand side, click on WAN, and then you get a virtual server slash port forwarding section, and you'll end up at a very similar window. No matter where your port forwarding is located, you're going to always have to provide the exact same details in order for this to execute properly. So you're going to need the external port, you're going to need the internal port, you need the internal IP address, and you're also going to need which protocol to use. Once you have all these details, you can enter it in, and I'll go ahead and do that right now. So the name is just going to be, you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it Pi Node Port Forwarding. That's fine. Uh, for enable rule, I'm going to leave it on, obviously. And then we want the interface. I can just leave mine as WAN. WAN is going to be common for everybody else. The from port, uh, it could be any. I'll leave it as any right now. And then the port series that I'm going to be sending. So the port forwarding series is going to be 31400. And then we can just go dash because it's a series that we're doing. And then 31409. So that's all 10 ports that we have right over here. And then below, we're going to be putting in the IP address. Now, the forward IP address is going to be the IP that your node computer is running. So for me, it's 192.168.1 dot one one three yours is going to be whatever your node pc's ip address is the forward ports that we're going to be doing is going to be the exact same so you can just copy and paste it and enter it in and below we're going to be leaving the protocol as both the options are tcp and udp um, both just makes it easier you could just leave it at that and if you have options for logging this is all up to you if you want to keep it and then you can click on apply changes. So once you've applied changes, those are usually automatic. I don't think you have to reboot anything at all. It should automatically take place. Maybe just give it a few seconds for the features to be refreshed. Then you can go back over to this page where I'm gonna be linking in the description below and you'll be able to scan your ports and see if they're opened. And when you click on scan, and as you can see right over here, I have three ports that are opened and uh, that's all it needs to communicate. So numbers 314.01, dot zero two and zero three are the main ones that it's communicating on. Uh, you will notice that you won't have all these open, even though they are on your router, they're going to be used in the future. Uh, it's only using three right now. So that's all good to go. So I'm trying my best to give you a general idea of how to do it because this does get tricky depending on the brand and the model that you're using. You might have to Google your specific router model if you're having issues to locate where port forwarding is. So Google is going to be your best friend. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. I'll try my best to answer them. I may not always have the answers, but I might be able to direct you into the right spot. So we're up and running. Everything's successfully passed now. And what we can do is just click on continue. Okay, so it's now turned on. The node is ready to test. You just have to hit the switch to turn it on and off. And basically what you're going to want to do is have it on whenever you're using your system or when you want to leave it available and turn it off when you're not going to use it or have it available. It's going to keep track of your availability and try to keep a, a record of that. So if you want to apply to be a super node later on, there's a little bit of a track record for that to go through. There's a lot more information about how this works on the website and it goes into a lot of detail. And what I'll do is I'll link that in the description below so you can read that further if you're interested in running a node 
for the Pi Network. But here we are, we're up and running. We're running a Pi Network node on a Windows 10 PC. It does get a little bit complicated because there are quite a few little components that need to be activated for it to be running properly. Uh, you can ask whatever questions and I'll do my best to answer them, uh, but it looks like it's successfully running. I'll leave a link to my blog that outlines all the steps in a little bit more detail in case this video wasn't as clear as I wanted it to be. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a like. I really appreciate it. If you want to know how this is progressing over time, subscribe to the channel and I'll be giving up updates about my journey with this Pi Network note. And that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.